he had been teaching is when a kid would come to school with a fidget be like, My mom gave me this because she says it's gonna help me learn. Well, you can go ahead and tell your mom two things, sweet cheeks. One, you're not gonna have that in class. And two, her French tips are a little outdated. Thank you. Fidget spinner. Hey, hi, hello there. Listen, before we even start, I want you to stop, but I want you to subscribe. Could you do that for me? Thanks. Second, I'm back on tour. Here's all the cities I'm coming to. Press pause, press pause. Did you pause? Now, before we even start, I want to clear the air, okay? Yes, I am reviewing fidgets that kids use in the classroom. I am very much anti-fidget, but I want to let you know, I know some of you are going to write me and you're going to be like, some kids need this to focus because of their inability to focus. It's a tool for learning, so they need it, and if they need it, they deserve it. How dare you speak ill of a fidget? Okay, calm down. Hear me out on this one, okay? Would you ever stick a kid in a kitchen and just say, cook? No, you wouldn't. Why? Well, it's just the reasons. They could burn themselves. They could cut their fingers off. They could die. So if that's true, why are we just giving fidgets to kids and saying, Go for it. Without laying down the groundwork first. I have absolutely no idea. But let me tell you what. If a kid's got a fidget, they better first know a few things. One, time and place. Two, how to use it appropriately. And three, the difference between using it to focus and using it just because you're distracted. That is a very advanced skill for anybody to understand. So fidgets are not for everybody. Pet peeve in teaching is when a kid would come to school with a fidget and be like, My mom gave me this because she says it's gonna help me learn. Well, you can go ahead and tell your mom two things, sweet cheeks. One, you're not gonna have that in class. And two, her French tips are a little outdated. Thank you. Anyway, I have some of my least favorite fidgets here and I'm going to deliver them to you in chronological order as how they showed up in the timeline of the educational system. Let's take it back to around 2004 14, shall we, with the fidget spinner. Now let me tell you about the fidget spinner. One thing is, they are absolutely the ultimate distraction. Two, I used to make my students mad by calling them a fidget spooner. I don't exactly know what a fidget spinner is. It's something like, uh, I think it's like a roller blade wheel uh, device attached to four little prongs that you literally just spin. This is all you do. If you get fancy, you can balance it on your wee little finger, just like, um, not like that. The kids will just sit there and spin and spin and spin. It'll be quiet reading time and all you hear is this. You know what a class full of fidget spinners sounds like? It sounds like a swarm of bees that are about to take over your friggin' face. I don't know, these ones light up, which means, you know, my ADHD just absolutely cannot handle it. But, you know, it is kind of amazing. But if I can't handle it, I don't know why it's my make is but they all could. And then they start trading them. When they trade them, all bets are off because someone's gonna trade one, and they're gonna want it back, but they're gonna be too shy to ask, so they're gonna go cry to their wee little mommy, and then their mommy's gonna call and be like, he didn't mean to trade, could you get that back for his kid? And I'm gonna answer the phone and be like, no, I can't, because I got about 14 IEPs to write. I'm up to my neck in grading report cards, and not to mention I have 14 other parents who are mad at me for absolutely no reason, so you can handle this yourself, Pam. These were terrible, but as wishful thinking parents always say, it's just a phase. And let me tell you what, these were just a phase. Quickly after the fidget spinner, we had thinking putty. Now before I start, I do wanna talk about this thinking putty. One, the canister is slippery. Two, this is Crazy Aaron's thinking putty. N no shade to Crazy Aaron, okay? Crazy Aaron, I actually like what they do. They employ people with special needs to help make their thinking putty. But I will say this, the name is absolutely deceiving because kids come in here like, I have thinking putty. It's a tool for learning. I'm gonna mushy mushy this between my little phalanges and I'm just gonna magically be able to do cross multiplication right? Another thing crazy, Aaron, I can't even get, I can't even get it open. 
What are we gonna do about that? Huh? You got a little malfunction in your canister here, bud. Crazy Aaron's thinking putty. This is, I don't know if mine's bad. I think, I think mine's spoiled. I think mine's spoiled. I don't think it's supposed to be like this. I think it's supposed to be a little goopier. I don't think it's supposed to be chunky. I don't think it's supposed to be chunky. I got chunky thinking putty. This is not helping me think. This is even more distracting. It doesn't stretch like the picture. It's not stretching like the picture, crazy Aaron. We got a problem. But let me tell you about other problems with thinking putty. Besides the fact that they don't help you think. I've had students bring this in my classroom and they get it caught in their hair. When this gets caught in your hair, you are absolutely screwed. <laughs> it gets in the carpet. Sometimes it goes in kids' mouths. And you know, if there's one thing about thinking putty, it's that it's not real fun coming out your pooper. Could you imagine if someone got thinking putty like lodged in their intestines you have to go to the doctor and be like, ah, uh, excuse me, I have thinking putty stuck in my anus. That would be, that would be embarrassing. It does have a pleasant texture to the hands. A very pleasant texture to the hands. But it's just overall messy. This is real goopy. Some of it has glitter in it. Glitter is the herpes of crafts. We do not need that up in our space. I would taste it, but I don't even know if it's non-toxic, so I'm gonna do myself a favor and not. I did one year have a student whose mom was adamant that this was helping her child learn. So uh, I said, that's fine, then I'm going to send you a video of her learning. That video was her rolling this out into a snake while the rest of us were taking our social studies tests, you know. Most of the kids were on question number 14. She was on question zero, cause she didn't even start yet. So when I went up in the video and I asked her, hey, what are you doing? And she goes, making a snake. And I said, what are you supposed to be doing? She goes, making a snake. No girl. We're, this isn't snake making class, all right? This is a classroom in the middle of Illinois. We're not trying to multiply the snake population of the Amazon. So I'm gonna need you to put your thinking putty away and call it a day. This, I can't stop playing with her. Let's fast forward to today. Here's one that's really gonna burst your butthole. It's a freaking poppet. This poppet I love because I could, I, if I was on Project Runway, I would fashion it right here and let the tips just sort of bedangle like that. And I would be like, this is my rainbow dress that I made out of unconventional materials that I found at Lakeshore Learning. Ha 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 ha. Ooh, down the runway with my poppet dress, but it's only the top. The rest of me is naked on the runway. I don't know. These are a, a, a reason. The reason that I don't get down with poppets is because what is it? Why? And what is it about it? It's literally just a bunch of holes and you, you pop it the other direction. Now, at first when kids were obsessed with these, I was like, is it challenging to pop them? Does it make some sort of sound when you push them? No. It's literally just that. I do not understand, but these are sweeping the classroom. Personally, I don't actually have problems with poppets. If you can handle having it and get your work done at the same time. But what I do have a problem with is some types of poppets. Like these oversized poppets, why do you need that? This is half the size of a kindergartner to begin with. If this butterfly was alive, it would turn and grab that kid like a bald eagle and swoop it up to the nearest nectar producing flower. Also, you have poppets that are being made into pencil pouches, into backpacks. There's shoes with poppets on it. Poppet keychains, poppet everything. Just stop it, poppet. Stop, stop it. I hate when school supplies turn into like a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. That is too distracting. A pencil pouch should hold your pencils. A backpack should be on your back and hold your books. That's it. It does not need to be mermaid scaled and scented for no reason at all. Puppets, although somewhat okay, um, need to go. Waiting for that fat to be over real quick. Let me show you the fidget of the future. These ones are starting to show up in classrooms all over the country. Let me introduce you to the slug. 
Now the slug is in fact an ADHD nightmare because I have not put this thing down since I've got it. And that also is not good when I'm unmedicated. I wrote a little song with this thing, listen. Dashing through the snow, my slug is the bell. Do you like when it rings? I think I'll go to... That's the end of, um, that's the end of my song. What is this thing? Still trying to figure it out. It's got a slug face and a slug body. And these little things just move in this miraculously, very satisfying undulation motion. And when it moves, it makes the sound that can only be described as captivating. This is amazing. But if you're gathering anything from the way that I'm totally transfixed on it, you're probably also realizing that this shouldn't be in the classroom. If you get your kids one of these, do me a favor. Teach them about when a time to use it is and make sure that time is at your house, not my work. Gracias. I don't know, these things are amazing. I think it's actually originally a baby's toy that somehow infiltrated the system and now it's just, you know, all over the place. I, oh, I, I think I broke it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to this page. I love you, I love having you here. Let me know about some of the fidgets that you know about in the comments below. I love you guys so much and we'll see you next week. Bye.